Hey guys, it is the Bookworm 21. Uh, second review of today, so here we go. Well, third book in the Laurel K. Hamilton and Eda Blake series. Circus of the Damned. Alright, check it out. The artwork, old school cover. Woo! Now apparently, this is what they think John Claude looks like. But, I think they could do a little better on the artwork there. And that's what Nina looks like in their mind. And this is the bad guy, Alejandro. Um, just a little side note, if you do check out the Anita Blake comics, the artwork of Jean-Claude and uh, Anita is much, much better. So, check it out, let me know what you think. Um, okay, well, a lot of stuff happens in this book. So, this is a book where it's new people are introduced and things are starting to kind of change in the world. This is a changing book, I'd say. Um, okay, what happens in here is this new vampire named Alejandro. Pardon my clock. Uh, he comes into St. Louis, and he wants to take over. Well, uh, he tries to get Anita to tell him where Jean-Claude is so he can kill Jean-Claude and become the next master vampire. Well... So it's an undead turf war over Anita. These two vampires are fighting over her. Jean-Claude wants to give her the rest of the vampire marks, you know, so she'll become his complete human servant. And she doesn't want to do that, of course, but throughout the course of the book, some of that happens. Um, so she goes to the surface of the dam to confront him, and she meets... Richard Seaman. Not Seaman, Zeman. Yes, I know, okay. That's that's a funny last name. Well, she doesn't know a lot about Richard yet, but she knows he's hot and she likes him. And he's quote unquote human. Okay. So uh there's a big battle with a Lima, and a Lima is a half human, half snake. Uh immortal, of course. Uh, so, she has the battle with him, and then, of course, she gets in trouble with her boss at Animators, Inc., so he hires a new uh, zombie raiser named Lawrence Kirkland, and Lawrence Kirkland is not even out of college yet. Nineteen, kind of a grown-up howdy-doody kind of guy, so, um, that's the visual there, and... He is fresh and green and golly gee whiz, I'm going to save the world. And Anita's like, oh gee, you know, calm down, boy wonder. Um, you know, she doesn't want him to get killed or hurt, but he's, he's too fresh out the box. So she kind of takes him under her wing and kind of schools him on vampires and werewolves and all that funky stuff. Um, and he doesn't like Lawrence, so call me Larry. So, he kind of becomes her little annoying, unwanted sidekick. She doesn't really like it, but she's got a deal. Um, he's pretty powerful, but he doesn't really know his own strength yet. You know, he's, he, he'll, he'll do too much, and then he loses control, and it's a big thing. So, uh, let's see, there's, there's also another bad guy in here coming in, um... Hmm. Oh, now this is another thing that's real important. Humans, there's a new group coming out in this book. It's called Humans Against Vampires, or HAV. And they're a fundamentalist group, and they hate all vampires, they hate anything supernatural, anything that's not human and Christian and white. So, if you're not human, Christian, and white, they hate you. So, you could be a gay, black vampire, and, you know, they hate you. Um... Also, you have to be a gay, black, Jewish vampire. So, they, they really don't like that. So, they want all vampires, all supernatural things just eradicated. And they want Anita to tell them about Jean-Claude. So, Anita's not going to do that. She wants to, but she can't. Because deep, deep, deep down there, she really likes Jean-Claude. So, she tells them about Alejandro, saying he's a match with the city. Well, Alejandro's kind of working for him as a double agent. Kind of thing. So, um, 
that's a new group involved. Uh, there's a lot of capturing, a lot of abducting, a lot of, you know, tell me where it is, I'll poke out your eyes kind of thing. Good, good book. Um, so that happens, and she, they have an uneasy truth with HAV at the end of the book. But the biggest thing is, we find out that Richard isn't human. He's next in line to be alpha of the local werewolf pack. So he can pass for human. And she's not real in love with it, but she can deal. Because at least, she, she looks at it like, at least he's alive, at least he has a heartbeat, he has a soul. He's not a vampire, so I can like him. So, she and him start to date. And they have a lot in common, and he's, he's really nice, and he's fun, and they're a lot alike. Um, which surprised me the most because I've read, I've read pretty far into this series before, and now I'm rereading it, of course. Uh, one thing that surprised me when this first started out was, A, uh, the language is very clean. There's not a lot of sex. And Richard is nice and normal and sweet. And that changes throughout the series of the books. As you get into the more, the bigger hardback series, um, the language gets a lot more graphic, a lot more sex and violence, which is not a bad thing. But Richard kind of loses his cuddly, wuddly, softy, nicey guy. Um, he's got some issues. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, uh, this is definitely a buy, of course. Got to have a whole series. Um, I loved it. What can I say? Uh, Laura King Hamilton could write the phone book and I'd read it. Um, I do recommend going to barnesnoble.com and looking up her latest book. And there is an audio interview there with her. And it explains a lot about her. Um, there's some things about her writing that remind me about my writing. So, um, for example, like, she has to have the name of the character before she can start writing them so that's how I do that a lot too so oh wow the wind's coming up isn't that fun okay so um, definitely read it let me know what you think and until then uh, keep reading bye